Hey guys, what's crack lacking? What's popping? It's your boy Ayakuno Duni. It's great to be with you all on this blessed, beautiful Sunday session. It's been powerful. The anointed, blessed woman of God, my dear wife, went to go and take us into the third heavens. I'm about to bring you back to earth to have a message from God. <laughs> but I know we, I know we'll be sweet. We've got a new phrase for the week. I'm leaning in. I'm leaning in. I am leaning in. Powerful guys, powerful guys, and and the, the power of being able to 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 just encapsulate, you know, a moments of prayer, of moments of refreshing into three words that can keep us going through the week, every single day. The reminder that we are indeed leaning in. I want to encourage you all. This is a time for us to, 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 to buckle up, get our notepads out. I want us to open, pray even right now that God would open our eyes. He would open our hearts. He would open our understanding. That he would open. He would open up our hearts to receive. Paul said in his letters, open up your hearts wide to me. Receive what I'm about to say. You know, the Bible lets us know that it's the hearts of good soil, of good ground that reap the 30, 60, 100 fold. So before I even go, Mr. Chief, let's just ask God to, to help us. Let's ask God to be, to, to have an expectancy in our spirit. Let's ask God to really whet our appetite. Let's ask God to open our eyes. Let's ask God for the word that is light. The Bible says that the entrance of his word gives light. And understanding to the simple, we're asking God as the word goes forth from your man's servant, let light beam through my eyes. And the Bible says, if the eye is single and is full of light, so will the whole body. So right now, the word of God, this divine exchange is happening right now, is for your betterment, it's for your edification, it's for you to experience the full counsel, for you to walk in complete wholeness and well-being. And we want to eat today and be full, come on. We want to be full, we want to exercise it and walk it out. And we want to also want to feed others that they too can see, that they too can be full. And they too can experience the life. So even now, Father, we pray that we have eyes to see. We pray that we have ears to hear. And we have a heart that is receptive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his church. In Jesus' holy and anointed, most excellent and precious and divine. Ah, beautiful one. My heart adores his name, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Guys, we're in week number seven of a new name. I was in the comments. I was there saying this has been a transformative series. This has been a series that, in my own eyes, has been one that has really changed the game. I, I mean, if one could apply, that's, that's one word mission, if from behind, if one could apply a new thing, a new name to their lives, I believe it can just bring us into a new dimension, a new paradigm, a new way of thinking that will continue to allow us to live a continual re renewed life in Christ. This is what some may say basics or foundational, but the Bible says that the house that is built on the rock is the house that will stand. And if God is calling us now in this time where there is great turmoil, where there is great madnesses all over the gaff, that this is the hour where I want you guys to be founded and rooted in me. There means that there are times coming ahead that we need to prepare for right now. There are times coming ahead that requires you to not, not, not to be affirmed in what you have, but in who you are. And God is echoing God is calling us. God is 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 is, 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 is continuously just a, a, a beckoning us to understand that I have called you by a new name. Therefore, you are a new creation. Thereby, all things are becoming new. And there's something about you, Christ in you. There's something about you. Yes, you. When you come into an understanding of who you are. That will transform your life and the life of those around you. And that's what we have been called to as children of God. To be the lights of the world and sort of the earth. The change that he does in us, we now 
exchange that to the life of those that are around us. So I want to encourage you today. This is a series that you need to apply. This is a series you need to be going back over and watching it again. You know, if, if me, my, one of my practices is, is that I always, if there's a sermons that I'm supposed to be listening to or that I am listening to that I really enjoy, well, I rinse that bad boy out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Ten times, guys. Why? I need to get that word into my subconscious. I need to get that word to go past my, ooh, that was dope, you know, into the, let it penetrate. That stubborn area of the heart. Let it penetrate. That stuck area. Let the word come like a two-edged sword and get into me. And every time I listen to it, I hear something new, something fresh, or the word that I really received, it, it, it gets stronger. So I want you to create a bond with the word, word of God by continually going back to it and continually asking the Holy Spirit to enable you to do it. And today I want to talk about trickstar to God mate. I want to talk about a man called Jacob. He was later renamed Israel. I want to talk about a man called Jacob. He was later renamed to a name called Israel. So we're going to read Genesis 32. The whole chapter. Yes, we're going to read the whole chapter because when I preach, I'm going to pick out a few scriptures. But I want us to read the whole thing. So engage with me. Flow with me. I'm reading it in the blessed ESV. And this ESV... You know, I'm, I'm a passion translation guy, don't know. You know, I'm an amplified guy, but the ESV encapsulates this one really nicely today. So I thought, let me come to my blessed English Standard Version. So Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. We're reading a whole chapter. Stay attentive. This chapter is loaded. And as I always say, the word of God is sweet. So let's eat this joyfully. I'm reading from verse number one. Genesis 32, verse number 1. Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called that the name of that place Mehaniam, which means um, double or two camps. Verse 3. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother. In the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And instructing them, saying, Thus shall you say to my Lord Esau, Thus says your servant, Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants, female servants. I have set to tell you, my Lord, in order that I might find favour in your sight. <laughs> Jacob and the messengers returned to Jacob saying we came to your brother Esau and he is coming to meet you and there were 400 men with him verse 7 then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two camps thinking if Esau comes to one camp and attacks it then the camp that is left will escape. Verse 9. And Jacob said, Oh God, my father, Abraham and the God of my father, Isaac, O oh Lord, who said to me, come on, look at this prayer, God, return to your country and to your kindred, that I may do you good. Verse 10. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For only, but for with only my staff I have crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me, the mothers with the children. But you said I will surely do you good. And make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Verse 13. So he stayed there that night. And from that, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau. 200 female goats and 20 goats. Male goats. 200 eels and 20 rams. 30 milking camels and their calves. 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 
female donkeys and ten male donkeys. These he handed over to his servants. Every drove by itself and said to his servants, Pass on ahead of me and put a space between the drove, the drove sorry, and the drove. And he instructed the first, When Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, To whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my lord Esau. And moreover, he is behind us. Verse 19. He likewise instructed the second and the third and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you find him. And you shall say, Moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with with the present that goes ahead of me and afterwards I shall see his face perhaps he will accept me so the present passed on ahead of him and he himself stayed that night in the camp we're getting into the meat of the of the chapter now guys verse 22 the same night he arose and took his two wives his two female servants and his eleven children and crossed the ford of Jabbok. Verse 23, he took them and set them across the stream and everything else that he had. Verse 24, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Hmm. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Verse 26. Then he said, let me go. For the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven or wrestled or struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 29. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And there he blessed him. <laughs> so Jacob called the name of that place Benel, Penel, sorry. Saying, for I have seen God face to face. And yet my life has been delivered. <laughs> I am delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed um, Peniel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the fire that is on the hip socket. Because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of his fire. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The word of God is sweet. The word of God is sweet. Hmm. Trickster to God made. Trickster to God made. Somehow we're going to get to the end of this. I'm already excited. I need to calm down. I have not even started the message yet, but I'm already excited because I already know the end from the beginning, but I'm excited. So, guys, 2020 has been a year and a half and there are some parallels that i've seen in scripture that i could see in our current lifetime that i want to draw upon today and just bring to your attention bring to your to your mind and allow you to 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 to, to sit on it and to and to weigh into it before this chapter jacob as you guys all know has two wives i believe scholars correct me if i'm wrong leah and rachel i believe and um, he's he's been serving in that land with his with his in-laws Leban for about fourteen plus years, and and um, he gets into a bit of you know marital um, what's the what's the what's the word to um, be for issues where he's getting too big, and and Leban's like, "Fam, you need to get out of my land, bro. You need to go, basically." And therefore, he needs to go back to where he had left before which was his brother Esau because he had tricked his dad into blessing him with the firstborn rights that was rightfully Esau and therefore he was afraid of his brother and fled because he had done a wicked and deceptive thing. And 
on this journey, Jacob is having to face his reality of what he had done and what he needs to now make peace with, which is deceiving his brother. Yeah? So this whole chapter is a journey between Jacob traveling away from Lebanon and into the land that he came from. But he can't go there without skipping the confrontation that has been pending for many years with his brother Jacob. Now, I want to say that 2020 has done one thing. And for me personally and those that I've spoken to, it has made us face to face with the reality of who we are. This lockdown period, this corona, has locked us into a zone, into a period, into a realm where we have had to come face to face, not with the same of the world, but with us. God has brought us to a place where we are no longer allowed to hide from what's wrong with us. We have been have to acknowledge that our darkness, we've had to acknowledge our lack, we've had to acknowledge everything that's not why everything that the business of life has allowed us to mask over 2020 has unveiled that mask and i believe that god has allowed certain troubles in this land that we could face the troubles concerning our own lives god said trouble between Laban and jacob that caused jacob to leave that land of comfort to confront his issue with his brother esau there was a day that was pending where he had to come face to face with the error of his ways. And what had gripped Jacob is what we see called fear. And if there's anything that has postponed or procrastinated the day of your confrontation is the fear of what you find when you've come face to face with the reality of what's there. I don't know about you, but in my walk with God, the things he explained to me now, I always knew they were there before. And the only reason why I didn't personally go to address it is because I was scared. He was afraid of his brother. And yes, he was afraid because he knew he had done something wrong. That fear was legitimate. That fear had created false imaginations in his mind about his brother Esau because when he met with Esau, his brother Esau kissed him and greeted him. His brother Esau had already forgiven him. But fear had created a presumption in his mind that Esau was still out to kill him. Fear had gripped him that he thought he could buy peace by giving presents. Fear had gripped him that he was now in a place where he was still operating in his old name. Well, his first name, shall I say, um, Jacob. But God had prophesied over the womb to his mother that, his, that, that, that the child in your belly, one shall serve the other. One shall be the promise. One shall be the one that will become the, 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 the word that he gave to Abraham, which was Israel, and that was Jacob. But up until this point in his life, and Jacob was very old at this point, he still had not stepped into the identity of the prophetic word of his destiny, of his purpose, of his calling, all that dandy stuff that we talk about because fear had gripped him. Fear had gripped him. Fair had gripped him. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna shout that word fair. Is a word we can all re relate with. It's a particular word that God said that I have not even given you. You see, the Bible doesn't speak about everything, but it's, it echoes some things. And the Bible said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, Aya, but power, but love, and a sum. Can you see what fear has stolen from us? Power to live. It's stolen from us the, 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 the understanding of the love of God. And it has robbed us of a sound mind. Mm. Jacob was not able to walk in the power of his new name because of fear. Jacob was not able to have a sound mind because of fear. Jacob was not able to know what it means to be loved because 
of fear. Fear is a thief. The world says it's false appearances. Well, no, no, false. Uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the acronym now? False something appearing real. False evidence. Thank you, sweetheart. Appearing real. False evidence. Because when God sees Jacob, God sees Israel. But it's one thing for God to say and see what he does. And, and let's be honest, God has spoken to all of us. Wonderful thing. But it's one thing to hear what he said. To hear what he sees and to become what he sees. And I believe in order for us to transition... We must come to a place of confrontation, of coming face to face with what's really good and come to a place of divine exchange. Susan touched on it. That woman did not allow the 12 years of failure to stop her from having the faith to even imagine that if I touched the hem of his garment, I might be healed. We touched on it. That God has covenant. And there was an appointed time where David had to remember his covenant with Jonathan and had to fulfill his word. And wherever and wherever you are, there was an appointed time, which I believe is right now, that God is saying, I need you to come face to face with what's really good. I need you to step into what is actually yours. And there was a particular scripture in this chapter that I want to hone into. It's the part where it says that, Jacob had to cross over a river called Jordan. And we look at this place called Jordan. It, the word alone means the one who descends. It, 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 it means what happened with Jesus who was baptised in the river called Jordan. That this is a, a symbol of going down the death of the old and coming up the beginning of the new. And God, by prophetic intelligence, has said that Jacob, when he was crossing that land, that river, that bend called Jordan, he was coming into a place of transition, which I believe 2020 has been a year of transition where we have had to respond, where we have had to now say, God, I need you to deliver me. I need to step over. I need to no longer be living the status quo. I need something more. The systems of this world have failed. We are now at a wilderness destitute place where I need what has always been to now be exchanged for what's next. I need what is old in my life to be exchanged for what is new. Jacob crossing over the Jordan was Jacob transitioning into a new era of his life in which we saw he now became a man who wrestled with God. Jacob had come to a point in his life in where he had to address the fear that was not allowing him to become the promise that God had ordained. I want you guys to understand this. You need to, you need to look at 2020 not from an emotional perspective, not from a vocational perspective, not from a perspective of man. Because if there is, there's no hope. Straight. Let's be honest. There's no hope. But you need to look at the 20 from the perspective of the way of the spirit. You need to mount up on the wings that eagles who have bird's eye to feed. And you need to come up here higher that you can hear and see what God is saying. And he's speaking right now. And he's speaking right now. I want you guys to understand that God is in a business of ending what needs to be ended in your life. He's in the business of setting an expiry date on this word called fear. He is in the business of saying, hello, you are a son, like we heard last week, and you have an inheritance. And guess what? It is freely given. Will you choose to respond? Will you cross over Jordan? Will you face to face with what is really good about? I've written down here, God will deal with what stopped him from actualizing the promise that he heard. God would end fear. I need you guys to understand something. God sees and God knows. And guess what? God can and God will. 
I want to wet your faith today. And I want to remind you that even this moment that we're seeing here is God's faithfulness. Look at the prayer. Jacob had to put God in reminder of what he said to him. According to what he said to Abraham and said to Isaac. I need you to understand something here. If my God is a covenant keeping God. If my God says I have a new name. People of God you have a new name. And God is requiring you to be like Jacob. Respond to the trouble in your life. By facing the one who is able to make all things new in your life. Jacob had to be troubled out of a place of comfort. He was getting fat. The father-in-law said, you can't stay here no more. We're, we're too much, we're too much, it's too much. And the only place left to go was to go back to where he came from. Was to go back to where the promise was said. To go back to what it was that was rightfully his. He had to go back. Some of us have to go back to what God last said. Some of us have to go back to the thing that God last said. Some of us have to go back, I don't know why I'm echoing this one again, to the thing that God last said. You know, the new thing ain't always God saying you to go somewhere new. Sometimes it's telling you God to go back to what I last said. And where you're now trying to flee. Remember, Jacob fled from that place. Go back to whence you ran from, from Ayah. And come face to face with the thing that you have done and make it right. Make it right. And guess what? When I say make it right, God is so gracious that he is the one that makes things right. He made us righteous. What does he require for you? Respond. Repent. Turn. Believe what he has to say. And... As the scriptures goes on, Jacob was left alone. He sent away his wife and his children and it was night time and he woke up and he was left alone. The Bible says that he wrestled with a man until the breaking of day. And as I was studying the scripture, I was just like, let me look a bit more into this wrestling thing. And I, and I found another scripture that I found amazing. It's Hosea 12, verse 3 to 6. Hosea 12, 3 to 6. It says, even, NLT, sorry guys, even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother. When he became a man, he even fought with God. <laughs> Jacob's life was a fight, guys. From the womb, this man was fighting. When he became a man, he was still fighting. He First, he was fighting his own flesh and blood. Now, he was fighting the one who called him and created him, a man called God. And it says, he wrestled with the angel and won. And he wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face. And God spoke to him. The Lord, the God of heaven armies the lord is his name hallelujah so now come back to god act with love and justice and always depend on him that's hosea 3 verse 3 to 6 and i thought to myself wow jacob was a man that was accustomed with fighting that this wrestling with god that he was experiencing now was a wrestle that he had always been from the beginning there are some things that god wants to end in our lives people of god that have been there from the beginning. Ah, there are some things that we have become accustomed to that we think is even normal. Yeah. Can imagine when you read the scripture at first, you think, "Wow, how can a man wrestle with God? Are you dumb? Are you wrestling God? Do you wrestling, wrestling God?" But that's how dysfunctional we are. That we now relate with God according to what we've been doing all our lives. But God is faithful, <laughs> and God is kind, and God will guess what meet you. Where you're at, even in your dysfunction. Can I announce to you, people of God, that even your dysfunction can be a way for you to connect with God? That God, in His faithfulness, will meet you where you are at. That's what I see with this. I know it sounds that thing that sounds a bit crazy, but hear me in context. This man was wrestling from the womb, his life was a fight. 
if I even if I bring it back to even our spiritual understanding of us becoming a new believer, our lives is a fight. Even before we got saved, life was a fight. It was a struggle, man. All of us know what it means to be in pain. All of us know what it means to be rejected. All of us know what it means to lie. All of us know in some shape or form, it may not be as grand as other people, but pain is pain. And life is life. And all of us have had various experiences that have caused us to become a people who are just doing things on our own accord. Who, have like, who are like sheep who have been led astray to each his own way. We've had to accustom ourselves as, as now people who are now men, who are now grown, that this is how I've always lived. And God says you don't have to live like that anymore. Jacob was left alone. Thought number one. This face-to-face -face that I'm talking about is between you and your maker. It's between you and your maker. It is between you and your maker. This is an hour to get alone with God. This is an hour. No, 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 don't get alone with yourself because that's how you go into deep depression. Take what is wrong with you and wrestle with it with God. Jacob was left alone, guys. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Thought number two, until the breaking of day. Until the breaking of day. Until the breaking of day. Do you understand something here, people of God? Until the breaking of day. Meaning, that whole night was a night of darkness. Meaning, what are you doing? When nobody can see. Because it's what you do in the dark. It's what you're doing now in your night season. It's what you're doing now in your, in your time of mourning. It's what you're doing now in your, in, in your time of darkness. Where everything seems to be gloom and doom. It's what you choose to do in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. That shows who you are and the light comes. Until the break of day, it basically means the new morning. I want to ask you a question, people of God. How are you managing in what I could describe right now, 2020, this, this era of our lives, this night season? How are you managing this season? What are you saying in this season? What are you facing in this season? What have you chosen to do? Because if anything I've heard over the last nine months, 10 months, sorry, 11 months this year, it's come to me i was pondering people of god I'm, I'm, and i'm speaking to a and t particularly right now i was pondering if there's a word that i could summarize 2020 in what god was saying it was come and we're now in a time of darkness where god says come and i need to implore you and encourage you don't define your faith by what you see around you the darkness Define your faith by the one who lives in you, who is light. Could it be that the wrestling until the day of break was Jacob and fighting the darkness until it became light? Could it be that God said, if you can last this thing, if you can endure this thing, if you can, if you, if, if you could fight to the time appointed for it to end, the break of day, you could become something new. Could it be? Could it be? I'm just inferring some thoughts upon the scriptures. Could it be? Could it be that this wrestling was Jacob becoming one with the one who is light? Because God is light and in him there is not light. Could it be that when Jacob was wrestling and it was dark so he couldn't even see who he was wrestling with, that the day of break came? And God says, this man can't see me yet because nobody can see me and live. <laughs> Could it be that God said, the time of my, uh, the, the time of light, the, the time of day, the time of revealing, rather than him, him seeing me, I'm going to let Jacob see, 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 see himself in me. I'm going to go into Jacob. Jacob's going to now become Israel. Could it be? I'm paralleling these things because in the new covenant, it's Christ in us. I'm paralleling this thing because when we get saved, we become a new creation. I'm paralleling this thing because the Bible says outwardly the man is perishing, but inwardly they're renewed. I'm paralleling these things because when I see Jacob wrestling 
I see a man becoming the one with the thing that he is resting in. I see a man resting unto the break of day. I'm seeing a man who refused to let go till he got what was rightfully his. This man said, I've got to face myself before I face my brother. And by facing himself, God was present with him. And God, and, 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 and God the man in that scripture is God, says, says that, that they were wrestling. Jacob was coming to terms with that, this is not who I really am. Jacob was, was having to, let's be honest, people, let's, let's be honest, even through the some of us still have to wrestle. We have to wrestle. Am I this trickster and deceiver or am I something new? Because God, I don't feel new. I don't think new. I'm hearing you say new, but I don't really believe I'm new. That's called wrestling. And it's even good that you're able to question. It means that there is a point in you that's just that's unsettled. That you're hearing one thing, but you're seeing another thing. And if you can wrestle a little bit longer, David came in August and said, stay a little longer. If you, if, 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 if you could just could press beyond and, 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 and give a sacrifice. When I say sacrifice, go beyond the means that's convenient for you. Maybe that daybreak will come. And maybe that new name will become actualized in your life. At this point of daybreak, at this point of a new dawn, at this point of a new morning, at this point of a new day, God says, I'm going to give you a new name. He said to him, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. You are no longer the thing that you have been struggling with. You see, the thing about struggles, yeah, and the thing about fear, and the thing about all those things that are, are gone on in your life that have become bondage in your life. It's not that. It's not, it, it's not that. Oh, it's just something that I struggle with. We've, 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 we've now made that struggle our identity. We have now allowed what Job said, the, what I feared the most, to come upon me. And here, God has to say, "I'm, I'm giving you a new name so that you can put on me." Because that new name means you have struggled. How you have wrestled with God and with men and have prevailed. Jacob didn't necessarily see the promise Israel, the nation, he became it. I need you to understand that the new thing that God is doing, though we will all behold it, before we behold it, it has to become you. I echo it every other week. The new thing God is doing is not necessarily what he changes around you. Because Jacob's sex was still the same around him. It's what happens inside of you. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can you see your mind? No, you can't. But you are your mind. And if I can change who you are, I can change how you live. The new thing God is doing is shifting your paradigm. Shifting your perspective. Giving you a new way of thinking and seeing and living. It's an inward work that's expressed outwardly. Understand, this thing that's happened with Jacob was something God said to Abraham. Many years ago. Many years ago. Okay. Could our fight be so grave? Because the fight that we're fighting right now is, 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 is generations due. What I mean, it's been pending before your mother and your father, before your grandfather and your grandma. It's been pending. And God picked you and said, guess what? You become the generational breaker. Because what Jacob did in tricking his brother was the same thing I did when he lied. And the same thing that Abraham did with that. We we're seeing a pattern that was almost bringing these men into dispute with God. Bringing the promises into jeopardy. And God said, I have to end it with the one in whom shall become the promise. Jacob. 
And it was a fight. And he won the fight. Can I, can I tell you something? The fight is fixed. The victory is already yours. God is calling you to partake. God is calling you to partner. God is calling you to engage. God is calling you to respond. Jacob became Israel, became the promise, became the model, and through him, a nation was born. God names, and we see the function. From Jacob to Israel, the nation was born. The Bible says, can a nation be born in one day? Who has heard of such a thing? Can a nation be born in one day? Yes, brethren. Can a new era be born in one day? Yes, brethren. Can God just change everything in the twinkling of an eye? Yes, brethren. Yes. From Jacob came Joseph. From Joseph came Israel going to Egypt. From Egypt came Moses taking it out to the wilderness. From the wilderness we see Joshua crossing once again the river Jordan. Transition into the promise. The plan of God starts with your obedience. The plan of God starts with your, with your response. The plan of God starts when you become willing to fight to become what God has given you. This is what Paul says to fight the good fight of faith. To believe what God has said. We have a fight, people of God. And the fight is to believe that I am who he says that I am. Our discipleship is the process of the fight. Of the I am, he says I am. And we first deny ourselves. We, we, we put the old man to death. We pick up our cross. We, we, we go through that, 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 that seasons of suffering. Uh, those, those times of formation. Uh, those times of molding and shaping. Those times of discipline. And we follow him. And in that following, God makes us into the thing he has ordained. I need to announce to you today, people of God, let's cross over this Jordan. Let's pass the test of 2020. Let's transition into the place of face-to-face -face with God. A new beginning is signified with a new name. A new day doesn't have the same name as yesterday. Today is Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday. I need you to understand that this new name we're talking about is us ushering into, into a new way of living. Into a new way of living. This new name means that what would before no longer exist, guys. And it takes faith to believe that. Because sight, senses will tell you, you still feel horny, brethren. Come on. You still feel the temptation. But can I announce to you today, your temptation is not your identity. You are a new creation. And God has to say it to you. And you have to receive it by faith first because God's not in the business of works. He's in the business of faith, of partnering. And guess what? As you believe by faith, your body will catch up. Remember, spirit, soul, body. There's something about this fight, guys, that I want you to engage in. There's something about this fight, guys, that I want you to engage in. Stop fearing what might be. And understand the end has been written from the beginning. God is calling you to walk with me. God is calling you to partner with me. God is calling you to walk with me. I need you guys to hear these words. I need you guys to hear these words. Even this fight is still God with you. You know what I found really amazing? Is that it says that he wrestled with God and with men.
God was present. Maybe there was two people there. I don't know. The scripture said God and man. I don't know if it's the same thing. I don't know. I'm inferring right now. Maybe he was wrestling with the man that he was. And maybe he was wrestling with the new person he could become in God. And maybe the fight was won because God was with him. Maybe. But I really want to implore you guys today. I'm only halfway through my message. I'm going to stop over here. I want to stop by saying your seed, your generations, your future self, as the world likes to say, needs you to respond today. The warfare is only great because the promise is greater. Jacob gave birth to 12 sons. Those 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. In his loins, out of Israel, God multiplied. 12, 12, 12. That 12 became a nation. Jacob was third generation from Abraham. Parallel. On the third day, God says, I'm going to sow seed-bearing plants. Maybe Jacob was the tree that was first the seed in Abraham. And maybe the wrestle to shoot out of the seed and to sprout up is the fight we've got to perform. Maybe the struggle we're facing is that caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Maybe the wrestling that we have to do today is God saying you've got to you've got to put to death the old. You've got to say no and step into the new. And yes, it's as easy as that and as hard as that. I'm going to take you on a process of renewal. Your encounter with God, which is what I'm really wanting to preach, preach you into, is that your encounter with God will leave you knowing, understanding, becoming, not just hearing, but becoming a new creation because he has given you a new name. You are a foundation for generations from now who will reap from it. God has laid you like a brick, like a foundation. And God is building upon you. So I need you, A&T, I need you, brethren. I need you to sow the seed of seeking today that you may reap the fruit of becoming tomorrow. I need you to do the work of seeking today. Remember, today's seed is tomorrow's heart. I need you to understand the change that you want to see must first start in you. I heard children when I was writing this message saying, I need you to need God, mommy. I need you to need God, daddy. I heard crying of descendants saying, I need you to do this. Because if you break it, it makes our future brighter. A righteous man is an inheritance for his children's children. What's the inheritance? Your covenant, your promise. And the Bible says something about Esau. You know what Esau did, people? Esau sold his birthright. Esau sold his covenant. Esau sold, uh, sold his promise for what? A piece of deal. Hebrews 12, verse, I don't know, 17, 18. And the Bible says, do not be like Esau, who sold his birthright. He was lustful. Last was not a sexual sky. It's about the, the need to have what God said now for later. Can I encourage you guys? Don't be like Esau. Don't sell yourself out for momentary pleasure. Wrestle with God. Wrestle with God. Because you and your generation and your generations will eat. Will eat. Will eat, will eat, will flourish, will prosper from your arrival, from your prevailing, from your succeeding, from your becoming. It starts with us. You have to ponder these questions, people of God. What if Abraham didn't obey? 
What if Isaac didn't do? What if? What if? What if? What if you don't do this? What if? And sort of you need to head a what if. So you weigh into the balance that I've got to do. And God is calling you. It's time to face God. It's time to face God in who you really are. Bring yourself. Bring your wrestles. Bring your struggles. Bring your issues. Bring who you bring your trickster. Yeah? Bring him. That's who you are. Okay, that's fine. And when you come to me, you become something new. When you seek to wrestle and you seek to say, I no longer want to be this person anymore, God. I need to be more like you. When you wrestle to the daybreak, when you endure, when you allow your, your, your time of darkness to come to an end, when you come to the end of yourself, there is a new dawn. There is a new day. There is a new name. And I decree over your lives today that we go into times of prayer and seeking. Even prayers of fasting. Even days where we set ourselves to find God. Uh, we no longer come with pretense. But we come with truth and with understanding. That there is something for me that's in you. And I'm not going to let you go to you. Bless me. Huh? I'm not going to let you go until you change me. I'm not going to let you. I need you to need God in this hour. And we will say and we confess even now we need you. Father, we even say now that we need you. Lord, we say now that we need you. God, we say now that we need you. I admit. Oh, I confess. Oh, I come to an understanding that this is where I'm at. This is what I've been doing. This is what I have become. But they said to me, Lord, in you all things are made new. Ah, that in you, God, there is hope restored. That in you, there is a new life. And Father, we declare today, we want to become like you. We want to be in Christ, hidden in God. We want to become new. So today, we surrender our ways, oh God, for your ways. And we say, Lord, who is faithful, the Lord who calls us by name that is trustworthy, would you bring into completion what you have already started? In Jesus' holy and precious and anointed name.